lawyer, believe it or not, yeah. I actually started to go to university. You, you, you can't say you, wrote, you own an African store if you are like country specific. So yeah. I grew up in a family where it's business all the way. So there's a, you don't just import because you're running out of stock. Anything that is close to what I've tasted is now spinach. Oh, mm -hmm. Black pain. Oh, oh, I <laughs> see. Goes to that like that. So I come here. My name is Bisoye Akiomi. If this is your first time tuning in, guys, you are welcome. It's so good to have you here. And if you're family, guys, it's always a delight to have you back. Guys, today I'm at Urban Ethnic Market. I'm here um, to support a sister and also talk about the event she's having today. She's having a food tasting and she just opened this store at Black Eve here in Cresta. So um, I'm here to just have a word with her and you'll be hearing how she started this business here in South Africa. She's a Nigerian, by the way, living in South Africa and also having this um, store that where she sells all African groceries, all groceries from different African countries. When you talk about the food, um, the different uh, recipes that you may have and you want to explore, I think this is the place that you need to come to to get all your, um, all your ingredients and explore the continent here in South Africa. So guys, come with me and let's just have fun today. Day. It's a beautiful day, it's a public holiday, and let's just have fun. Yeah, the different foods we have them that represent the different African countries. We have um, food from Zim, from Congo, from Ethiopia, from Nigeria. I mean, you can really travel Africa without having to leave OR Tambo. So, guys, have fun with. I'm Lindem this morning and she's tasting a food from DRC Pondu. It's called Pondu from DRC. And she's a South African, but I want her to share with us what the taste is and uh, what she felt like tasting this food from another African country. So, Lindem, you tell us how is the food and is this particular meal. It's called Pondu and it's from DRC. It's called Pondu, it's from DRC. As a South African, I like experimenting with different cultures, different food. But this came handy at my doorstep. As a South African, it came to South Africa. Yeah. I'm enjoying it here in the black heat. Um, I've also tasted the peanut rice from Zim. So the food is quite tasty. Although they're using this spice, but I wish they can even maybe prepare these meals because I can get the spice and the method of doing it, but I don't know whether I'll, I'll do it exactly as they did. Okay, so do we have anything similar to this in South Africa that anything close to this kind of... Anything that is close to what I've tasted now is spinach. Oh. Yeah. yeah okay, and so because it's cassava leaves and yes. vegetables will always spread, so yes. will always be similar to each mm -hmm. other. Okay. And the Zim uh, peanut butter as well. I'm used to the texture of our South African yeah. peanut butter, the black cat, yes. but this is a great taste. Yeah, that's Did you know that you can even use peanut butter when you do rice? Mm, <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Nindeleni, for that. It's a pleasure. Um, I'll also be interviewing a few, a few more people and also no. have my own tasting as well, and we can explore the different African food that we have here in South Africa. Thank you. Oh, great. So I come here, now they have a 
the large fish selection. So I'm like, oh, that's great. Is that at the shopping experience for you? How was it? Oh, I love the new shop. And I love the rebranded with the black and the white. I love it. Beautiful, beautiful. So I just tell everybody. I just, I really love the new shop. I must say. Thank you. This is definitely It's really beautiful. It's my first time here as well, and I just want to see how she's doing and also support the new business as well. I just want to have you snore. Just to come and support. Is it? Wow. They are doing well. Miss Lovely Bassi, and I just want her to tell us a bit about herself and urban ethnic market. How did you come about? So, like she said, I'm Lovely Bassi. Um, I'm a lawyer, believe it or not. Yeah. I actually started going university, and I do hold my license. I practice um, in two countries, but you know, when you're trying to, as in well, how would I say this? Is it an expert trait? When you leave in a country that is not yours, you're always trying to find um, your your own groceries and all of that yes. stuff. And uh, one of the times I was trying to do that, I actually had my phone stolen, my, my bag stolen in town. I did just the person. Did you get it back? I got my bag back. <laughs> okay. um, but after that, you know, we started thinking at a point, I was at a point where, um, I wanted to start another business, so we thought, oh, what's the, what's the good thing to do? What's the one thing? You know, you always have to find a niche area. Mm. What is it that people are doing that you can do better, better. or people are not doing? Mm. So we decided, let's open an African store. Mm. But we didn't, just open, we didn't just open an African store, because what you generally find is you find African stores where it's actually a Nigerian store, mm. or it's a Cameroonian Bridge store, yes. or it's a Congolese store. Mm. So we said, well, if people are going to taste Africa, no point calling yourself, um, an African a Nigerian store. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you 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 can't say you wrote, you own an African store if you are like country specific. Mm. So we decided to rather open something that would cater to all African countries um, in one place. In one place. So that was the whole idea behind it. Oh great! I uh, know. Thank you for sharing that. Okay. So how? I, I like I've said you 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 a lawyer. I mean, if you're, you're a professional, but you wanted to start a business, so the motivation for you was to have um, a place where people can go to and get all the African groceries in one place. So I'm, I'm sure for a business like yours in, in a country that you're not familiar with, I mean, you didn't grow up here, so how... Technically, I've been here for half my life. Really? Yes. Really? Yep, I've been here for half my life. Okay. Oh, so you are doing... <laughs> so I'm okay. about the furniture. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, she's a South Jerian. Like, yeah. She, she, yeah, you, you guys understand what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So, was it easy for you to get funding to start business, or did you, from your, your from you being a professional, mm-hmm. were you able to save up? Because how this, this is quite big. It's huge in, in the environment that you are in. I mean, the, there's progress. I can really see that you're doing well. So, if I want to, for example, start yes. a business. Yes. What would be the advice you give to me in terms of funding, in terms of establishing myself as an African here in South Africa? Well, the, the one of the first things I would say is if you are a foreign national in South Africa, um, you're not, you can try the banks, but hey, look, the banks will not be the first to answer you, I'm just saying. And what the, 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 the facility the banks will give you will be very limited. limited. So, um, what I would say is you save up over time. Mm-hmm. So we we have been, you know, our family, I grew up in a family where it's business all the way. So there's always one business or the other that we're doing. So we, we say we'll be saving up over time and, you know, you pull resources from, from the Different. family. Mm-hmm. And then, so even though it's family's money that helped you open the business, you're like, it's still my business. So, hey, you all stay away. You all rip the dividends in one way or another, but hey. So they're you shareholders, give, but you're you shareholders. are the main shareholder yes, of the business. Yes, but okay. I, it's still my business. So, mm-hmm. you, you, so, but that's what we do in our family, you know. So we, we, we save up and mm-hmm. then someone start a business, you give the person the money. But yeah. it doesn't mean you go butt into that business. It's mm-hmm. their business at the end of the day. You've given them the money, you've given them the money. And it's been open for how, how many years? And it's been... We opened in 2017, wow. so it's it's been it's been what over five, yeah. really seven, eight, four nine, years, four, four, four years, years now. Oh. So yeah, we're technically four years. Oh now. wow, great! We started walking. You, you, yes, you're making it. Yes. We see you on the yes. map. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so then one other question. How did you come about the name of Ban Ethnic Market? Is it? Yes, I want you to explain that. How did you come about the name? Well, the, the thing is, when it, Urban were like, okay, so we are not going for the traditional where you just open a shop and mm. just put everything mm-hmm. inside. So it has to be urban, it has to be trendy, it has mm. to be moving with the times. Wow. And one of the things, the main thing is it sells ethnic food. Yes. So it comes back to ethnic. Yeah. Now, the market part, because people, are, are, people tend to ask us, so are you like a whole market? I'm like the reason it's a market is because you can find things from different African countries in the same place. Here's the market part. Okay. So yeah, so that's how we came about the whole name. Oh, great. Okay. Um, tell us how do people find you um, on your social media pages? Do you want us to just tell us how people can find you more? Yeah. Because we yes. want other Africans to really to come here us. and you know patronize you, support you. You're Absolutely. doing well. So tell us where we can find you. So if you just enter urban ethnic market in Google Maps and Ways, you will find us. So you get our address and you can use the directions to get here. Um, but we're also on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and we've got a website. So hey, there is um, you know restrictions on traveling now and a whole lot of stuff and people are generally unsafe and trying to keep safe. So you can go to our website and you can shop online and we use a courier service to deliver to you. Okay, to to be having said that, how Pandemic has affected a lot, a lot of businesses. That is true. So, how have you been able to stay afloat? What did you do differently that has really? I mean, people have closed shops, closed store, and you are opening one. So, what what is it that you've done differently that has really um, made you have this kind of result or outcome? So, one of the look, coronavirus and the pandemic has its own. It, it's a terrible thing mm. all around. Mm. But one of the things it also gave people is the opportunity to reinvent yourself. Mm-hmm. So, you know, looking at everything, we if you are not conscious about your cash flow, you are not conscious about your expenditure mm-hmm. and your income, during the pandemic you would have had to really look at it. So we had to reevaluate a whole lot of things, you know, our import strategy, what we do. Um, you don't just import because you're running out of stock. Is it is it um, is it viable to import right now? Is it better to source from other people? So you start making all the decisions and then I we, I looked at where we were. And I'm like, okay, so this place is nice and all, but it's it wasn't my original idea. It wasn't it wasn't done in the way I wanted it to, to be done. So I decided, okay, so I'm going to get a smaller shelf, and then I'm going to design it the way I want it to be designed, and then it will have that feel from right from the door, and it will have that flow, and that it will be a place that it's welcoming to whether you're black, you're white, you're African, you're European, you're Caribbean. Colored. 
and you know, just whatever. imagine what you are. Mm. If you come into the store, you, you will feel, relate and you mm. feel you don't feel Connected. overwhelmed like you are a fish out of water. Mm -hmm. So that was the whole idea. And it's just you know, you sometimes, you know, people think it's all about every time expanding, expanding, expanding. You need to grow, you need to open a bigger one, a bigger one. Sometimes you actually need to to expand, you need to compress. You need to to see what is working. Yes, you need to shrink yourself and then you grow again. So it's all about the times and actually, you know, the virus, the whole pandemic did give people an opportunity to get out of contracts and all of that stuff. So, hey, you know, it's really a time to look inwards and then outwards. Okay, so for people that can't come to the store, you do delivery? Um, yes. Okay. Yes, okay. so they purchase online and then oh, we deliver. Okay, so that's great. Then also, I, I, I want you to touch on... Um, you have in this store, how has it um, affected your professional life, family life? Has it been more demanding? Is it something, do you delegate or how do you, I mean, be able to stay, be responsible in other areas of your life? I know this is not the only business that you have because I've been... No, there's one next door. Yeah. <laughs> I know there's one next door, guys. Yes. That she, she she's managing this woman. Oh God. Anyway, I, how do you manage? Now you have another business. You have family. You have your professional life. You have this business, and I'm sure you have other things as well. So yeah. how are you able to be consistent? Well, uh, hey. look, <laughs> it's, it's, a a it's a difficult question to answer because. People tell when people hear someone is a workaholic, they they try, they try to see it in a bad light sometimes, or they just think you don't sleep. But my mom thinks I don't sleep enough, so that's a different issue entirely. But um, at a point, you just we we have so many years in our lives to go and do what we want and be successful and try our best. This is, there's a time in your life where you try. It's not a matter of whether you fail. It's a matter of that you try. You do it. You do it. So I'm in that space in my life where mm. I am going to try it and I'm going to do it. Mm. Even if I fail, failure is just a bypass. It's just something, it's a natural thing that happens. When you fail, you just dust yourself up, you, you do it again, you plan it a different way and you, and, and you just make it work. So, um, being consistent it's, in different yes, businesses. You know, so everything that you do, you, you just give it your best. Is that what you're saying? I, and yes, if it doesn't work, time. you see what else can work and you continue. Sometimes this, the thing that does not work, it's how you're doing it that's making it not work. So it may not even be that particular business that's the problem. It's just how you're functioning in that business. So sometimes you just need to re-strategize that same business, that same idea and make it work. Um, some people they get into the thing of oh I'm selling I'm selling black soap it's not working uh, I'm not getting customers so I'm just going to go sell shea butter but is the problem the item you're selling or how you're selling the item so you know you have to look at all of that but then again with each business that I'm involved in I've got I've got I've got great teams so even if I travel the business works even if I'm not there the business works um, so I've got great teams they're trustworthy they're effective they're efficient. Uh, but I'm also present, so I'm not like one of those people that I own a business and then you don't sit yeah. Yeah. So I'm also present, I know how everything works. Mm -hmm. Like this shop when we're setting it up, the, the boards by the till. Mm -hmm. It's me and one of my staff that put it. Okay. I saw a picture so, of yours, I'm going to put a picture somewhere the, the, here. You were pre you yes, DIY everything, yes, you were doing it yourself. Everything. That's so impressive. So the nails, everything, the mm -hmm. only thing I did not do in the shop is to paint it. But that's because I don't like the smell of paint. paint. But so I, you press the wall, I cannot color the wall. Oh, no, this is but, beautiful. Yes. I saw this and I'm like, no, <laughs> this is really beautiful. So you actually unpicked everything that is here and everything, put it together. Everything. I, I either bought it or I had someone buy it and then we installed it together. Mm. So every single thing, I know how to do every single thing right from the bottom to the top. Because if I know how to do it, then I can understand how it works and then nobody can. Bush expert. <laughs> yeah. Okay, no, great. Okay, one last question, Lovin. Tell me, um, living here in South Africa, mm -hmm. how has it um, inspired you or made you be the woman that you're here, that you have today? Has it, um, I mean, South Africa is a diverse um, country. No, that's true. It's, um, it's big, it's huge. I mean, you, you can do uh, practically anything, but in terms of you having a business, how has being in this country helped you achieve the different things that you're doing? Well, 
doing business in South Africa is not easy, let me put it, let me say it there. Um, especially as a foreign national, it's really not easy. You have to work 10 times harder than everybody else. Mm. But it is what it is. So when you understand that this is what you're, this is the, this is the environment the that you're in, mm -hmm. you make it work. Mm. There's no point hating on the environment mm. that you're in. Hating mm. on it doesn't help no you. Pain. You see what you have to work with and then you work with it. So as a person, it's made me actually work harder. Mm. I think it's actually, that's my nature. Mm. I just, <laughs> And you find different avenues to and use the nature yes, that you have. You just reinvent yourself. yourself all the time, mm. you know. Mm. Um, when you open a store, things that would not necessarily be an issue with every other tenant mm. in the building mm. suddenly becomes an issue with you. Mm. So you, 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 you recognize the limitations. Mm. You push boundaries, mm -hmm. but then you make it work. Wow. So you see what you can, what you can do, where you can do it, and then you have partnerships. You make you have partnerships with other people, with friends, um, with colleagues, and then out of those partnerships, you get beautiful things happen. So you know, it, it's it's been a growing experience and it's been a wonderful experience. Well, thank you, thank you, Lovely, for sharing that, guys. As you can hear what she said, you know, you limit. There will be limitations, but you need to push those limitations. You need to push those boundaries. You need to make it work. And um, there's no excuses. Doesn't serve anybody so living here in SA I mean she's discovered herself more she's growing and I'm really inspired by your story thank you for thank you so giving me the time allowing me to do this with you I really thank you do so appreciate much for coming it. To no, no, thank you so much David I really do appreciate it so guys here we have it I'm going to put all our details on the screen in the description below you know what to do you know where to go and please support my sister like yeah support everybody from Africa is my sister and my brother by the way so please support this business thank you for watching uh, I'll see you on my next video cheers